My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe, Joe Pinion. Today on the Desert Island Death Match, we're dealing with one of the greatest bands of all time, Pink Floyd. And who better to have on? Probably the biggest Pink Floyd fan that I know ever. A musician, so we can actually have some context behind these songs. Guitar playing legend from our, my hometown in Nanaimo, British Columbia, here on Vancouver Island. Currently in New York City, the lead singer and guitar player from the Tristones in New York and around the world, Tristan Clark. Tristan, welcome to the Desert Island Deathmatch. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I think I need to hire you to give me intros all the time. That was, a, that was a, one heck of an intro. <laughs> Pleased to be here, Joe, um, and excited to talk about Pink Floyd. Uh, about myself, well, I've been playing guitar for, you know, 30 years, 30 plus years now. It's getting getting to that point where it's hard to count. i uh, working musician since I was in high school, pretty much. And, uh, you know, Pink Floyd's been one of my favorite bands since, um, well, since I, I, I believe it was in grade six when I got the chance to see Pink Floyd. My parents took me in 1994. I, and I and I think I'm part of like a like a small elite club of 40 year olds that has actually seen Pink Floyd. I feel like I can lump myself in with people that saw the, that still refer to the band as the Pink Floyd. You ever talk to those people there? You ever talk to someone that's like I remember the Pink Floyd because they used to be called the Pink Floyd. <laughs> Post into the chat, Tristan, uh, the set list from that Pink Floyd show that you watched in 1994 in Vancouver. It was oh, crazy. Huge, yeah, so that set list is in there. It's really cool. Yeah, um, I wouldn't mind. Uh, uh, I'm trying to guess what the opener is. I th and, I'm, and I think it was. I think it was Astron Astronomy Domini. Was that the first tune? I think it was, yes. Yes, and it was. Woo! <laughs> It was 94, it was July the 20th, or June the 25th of 1994 yeah. in Vancouver. That show will come in, I'll, I'll talk a bit about that as well. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that I was supposed to go to that show as well, yeah. and uh, my mom shut it down last minute, <laughs> unfortunately. And so I had a sleepover at my house with uh, two, uh, two of our mutual friends, and uh, it was going to be the greatest sleepover ever. We're going to have all kinds of fun and, and forget about this Pink Floyd concert. And it was crazy. But at the end, we watched a movie. And then for some reason, we switched on the television. We were, we were in that old fifth wheel beside my parents' house. Yeah. And uh, put the television on. And the night, nightly news came on. And it was instantly... Pink Floyd, show the century or show the decade or whatever. <laughs> and then just like Pink Floyd just leaves everybody stunned. And, and I remember they showed the stage and I just remember, I can still remember the looks like uh, uh, we were just dumbfounded and just like, holy yeah. shit, that looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to get into the Desert Island Death Match and uh, yeah. at the end of the episode, first we're going to give our Desert Island playlist for Pink Floyd 20 songs, it's tough. Uh, they're not in order, and uh, yeah, that's another thing, Tris, don't put them in order from one to 20. It's hard, it's so hard to put a song yeah, above another. Yeah, I got together. I might even have over 20 on my list, but. Okay, and then the other thing too is that if there's a song such as uh, Another Brick in the Wall or Shine on Your Crazy Diamond, that's just one song. So we're going to go through our, uh, our top 20 playlist for the Desert Island playlist for each of us. And then at the end, we're going to have to go to the same Desert Island and compromise a little bit and sabotage a little bit as well. And so I'm going to start it off first. I go first in this one. When we get to the Desert Island death match, Tristan, uh, the guest, Tristan, is going to go first and wipe out one of my songs first. Okay, let's get into this. We're, we're going to build our Desert Island playlist. Mention a little bit about each song along the way. We're picking 20 songs we're bringing to our Desert Island. 
This is going to be the Desert Island playlist. This is the 20 songs that I would bring with myself to Desert Island. Tristan's going to bring his 20 favorite or 20 songs that he would want to have on the Desert Island from Pink Floyd. This is easy for us. It's a lot harder to cut out so many songs. And mm -hmm. uh, and then at the end we'll get into the Desert Island death match. Remember to vote on your favorite in the comments below. Also, when we mention performances and different different stuff, I'll be a bunch of links in the description below uh, that you can check out all those videos that we're discussing throughout the way. Also, like and subscribe. But yeah, in the description below, it'll have our playlist. Vote for your favorite in a comment, uh, either Tristan's, myself, or the finale list, which one you think is the best, or if you think we're totally f that too, it's all good. Um, these are just opinions, and the first song I'm bringing with me to my Desert Island on my Desert Island playlist is from 1967. That's their uh, debut album, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. I'm going with the opening track on some versions, apparently, of this LP, Astronomy Domini? Domain? Astronomy Do Domini. Astronomy Don Domini. Uh, Lime and Lipid green a second scene a fight between the blue you once knew piper of the gates of dawn now this is uh sid barrett uh in you know sid barrett the found basically the founding member of pink floyd or the the main guy who started it off this very charismatic guy a one-off a, a total character in the history of music especially psychedelic especially art music <laughs> Astronomy Domini, the first one. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I mean, I you know honestly, I've never really checked out any of the lyrics to the songs for the for the song. Just like I can just kind of I just kind of hum along with it because that's that, that's my sort of guitar player musician attitude. But I really love I you know I I love the guitar playing. Like just that weird sort of uh, tritone. Whatever that part is, like this descending major chord thing, it's it's amazing. So far, that song, because it's been chosen by both of us, that actually automatically goes onto the Desert Island playlist. It's where we don't have the same song. So yeah, so we get right on, man. And this is, I mean, Tristan and I are very close, and we're going to have a lot of the same songs, I think. So yeah, so not a big shocker there. Um, and we're gonna be enjoying life on this desert island where we don't gotta do any fucking chores, we gotta do nothing but listen to the same 20 Pink Floyd songs. <laughs> Next song, we're going all the way to 1971 Metal, and the song is Echoes. Now, the first thing I think of with this song is, is Tristan's dad and one of the most important people in my life, first and foremost, but also the biggest influence to obviously Tristan and myself when it came to music. Um, Dan would play this song at Halloween every year, and that was one of my introductions to Pink Floyd. It was definitely my introduction to Echoes and Metal was Your House. And uh, this is a song actually that's grown on me more and more through the years. There's the live in Pompeii performance, which is yeah. just insane. It's so yeah. good. Um, I recently actually sold that DVD. Because Echoes is, it's like 30 minutes long, something like that. Overhead, the albatross hangs motionless upon the air, and deep beneath the rolling waves and labyrinths of coral caves. Sick lyrics for sure. Uh, but this is really the point where the band comes together as metal. And this song in particular is the first time, really, in my opinion, of Pink Floyd where all four members are just coming together at the same time and actually as a unit. And it's so funky. The standout to me in this song is Roger Waters. <laughs> and I, which is, which is, I just love the bass in this song. Yeah, when I get in the funky section in the middle there, I just, I, that's where the stereo test comes in for me. So next, next on my Desert Island playlist, I'm going with Echoes. Yeah, so I, I also picked Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. 
We don't have to be so fucking disappointed about it. It's your desert island, so. It's <laughs> <laughs> Just because I mean, I it's it's I mean that's one of the songs that they still kept, or at least Roger Waters still kept playing live, and it's and it has that gong in it, right? So. <laughs> Next up on my Desert Island playlist, this one's coming for sure, is also off of 1971's Metal. I'm going with the track Fearless. Um, uh, you say the hill's too steep to climb, try and you'll find it's not so high. And if you give, don't be afraid, you try just where you were. So this is actually co-written by Roger Waters and David Gilmore, so a next level. Pink Floyd fan song where you just kind of, you, you hear all the main stuff and then you kind of dig a little bit deeper and then you start pulling these gems out of the other albums as well. Not just, not just like the, the seven, you know, the mid seventies stuff. And, uh, yeah, this was like sort of the, when this one, when I finally bought metal and, uh, listened to it for the first time, this was the standout to me at that time. Next up for me, uh, I'm going to jump into metal too. And uh, one of these days is a big tune for me. I remember seeing them do that live and just being absolutely just the light. I remember the lights just being crazy. And um, they brought out the pigs. Those the, if you watch Pulse, there's like the two pigs that came out on came on the side. And I remember seeing they don't show it on the video, but I remember being a kid and I watching those. When the pigs came out, they, they weren't the floating pigs because they lost the floating pigs in the lawsuit or something like that. <laughs> and uh, so some kind of copyright thing or something. But anyways, they uh, they had the two pigs. I remember they, they, they dropped and they kind of like sort of came on the crowd and the audience and they pulled them back, right? It's the only time Nick Mason uh, sang on a record where he did that. He did that. One of these days I'm going to cut you into little pieces. Whatever. <laughs> And then, uh, what was it? And then just the chorus. But you need, you need that effect on there, that delay effect, because uh, if I turn it off, it's just... You get the effect. It's so cool. <laughs> And back then, like I, like on, I, I have a delay pedal here, and, and and if I need a tempo, I can just tap the tempo, right? But they just like you had to like sort of slowly dial it in, and like all of a sudden, if the band you know goes off, everyone's got to stick to that. It's almost like you're play, you're you have like a click track on your pedal board or something, like that, right? It's it's pretty cool. And then and then plus the uh, the the uh, the lap steel uh, solo in the tune that David Gilmore does is it's it's insane, so good. Okay, next up on my list from 1971, again from Metal, I'm going with the track Tristan just said on his playlist. And once again, this one's making the Desert Island Deathmatch finale one of these days. Now, one of these days, I'm going to cut you into little pieces. The only lyrics from the, the entire song, finally one I've got memorized, finally one short enough my dad could even memorize the words to it. Um, and uh, it's just, an, it's a powerful instrumental track. Tristan already mentioned it, slide guitar, uh, the bass, just, it's a, it's, a, it's a Pink Floyd standard. One of these days, 1971. Um, next on my list is uh, Echoes. Um, I mean, I don't have much more to say other than what you already said. It's, uh, you know, it's an epic piece of music. You know, it's kind of like the sort of precursor to some, you know, big epic tunes that come after that. Um, I remember the same thing we talked about live at Pompeii. You know, it's like, what a badass version is uh, that one is, uh, the, the Pompeii version. I've had, I, you know, I've had the, uh, I was lucky enough to see Nick Mason play that uh, tune at the, uh, at his last tour. He did like an Echoes tour. On my Desert Island playlist for Pink Floyd, one of the greatest bands of all time. I'm going to jump a little forward in time here to 1979. Uh, the final album with the four members that were really the guts of the band for most of Pink Floyd from The Wall. Uh, first song from The Wall on my Desert Island playlist, I'm going with Young Lust. Oh, I need a dirty woman. Oh, I need a dirty, dirty girl. 
Yeah, Young Lust, it's gritty, it's energetic. Yeah, it's reflecting some of the characters' central themes. Uh, if you've ever watched The Wall, an incredible movie. Honestly, one of my favorite movies ever is actually The Wall. I love it. Yeah, it's super depressing. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually co-written. This song is co-written by David and Roger. I put, I put Obscure by Clouds in uh, When You're In, the second track, um, as one track, because I, I can't not listen to those two tracks together because they're another big sort of instrumental awesomeness you know just um the riff that it goes into the uh I, it's like they they it was the first sort of um recording of like an electric drum machine too that they ever that they ever did i think it were, or even ever like how the, how the track starts with the has that kind of like sort of weird kind of galloping drum thing like that's a that's like an a, like a early version of an electric drum because that would have been 1971 or 72 right so uh next up on my desert island we're going to be listening to some depressing shit <laughs> from from the wall super depressing but i've got to have it because it's a song that i probably sing at least once a week anyways just walking around the house <laughs> the track is nobody's home uh, I've got my little black book with my poems in, got a bag with my toothbrush and a comb in, and when I'm a good dog, they sometimes throw me the bone in. I love the lyrics. The music like is great, the synth is great and all that, but the I love the lyrics and I love, this is like the ultimate, one of the ultimate like sort of Roger Waters talking his way through a song. Well, I, you know, I, I was uh, as you you picked that tune. I was just thinking, like, well, you're a big Tom Waits fan, and I could totally see like a Tom Waits version of that song. Hundred percent. I got a little black book with my poems in it. So you just did "Obscured right by Clouds." Yeah, and uh, child childhood's end. Ch uh, childhood's end. You know, I, I like when I first heard "Obscured by Clouds." I went to it. You know, later, I obscure. I. I, I um, checked it out. I think I, you know, the first time I heard it was I was I was still in high school. I remember like uh, some um, some friends of our family had had it on CD, and I remember like having like my disc in and just taking it and listening to it, and just thinking it. I just thought the whole record it was just so different from what I was, you know, because I was going through this big Pink Floyd craze, and all of a sudden I heard this like "Obscured by Clouds" is like such a, you know, it really is a for, for me it was a, like a different sounding record. Like it almost had like kind of a, a roots rock uh you know some of the tracks almost sounded like it could have been you know the band or little feet or something like that like it had like a more of like kind of a folky rootsiness to it but still still pink floyd obviously and that was one of the and that was one of the tunes that uh really stuck out to me it's probably their most diverse record i mean where they definitely they definitely jump into some different directions that they never really went again and never really went before. Next up on My Desert Island, we're gonna be listening to some more stuff from The Wall. Next track I've got on mine is The Thin Ice. Uh, you can go skating. <laughs> Anyways, this song is just kinda, yeah, this one, uh, The Thin Ice, uh, uh, Baby Blue. It, is what I thought it was called growing up, right? And uh, just the way it opens, the sound. I mean, The Wall is an album that, over my time with Pink Floyd anyways, I fell in love with it first. It was probably the first Pink Floyd I ever heard after Tristan, after you went and watched Pink Floyd, or maybe it was bef even before that, but I remember one of the first songs I ever tried to play on a guitar was Mother. And uh, so the, the I probably picked this album up listen, looking for another brick in the wall and uh, out of my brother's collection there. This is one of the ones my brother had. And uh, uh, the whole first side of the wall, the first disc especially, I knew every song really well. And uh, yeah, this is just one of my favorites off it. I want a song like this on mine. And there's so many, almost similar songs or you know great songs as well from the wall so it's kind of hard to choose i landed on the thin ice getting into dark side of the moon breathe the opening track dark side of the moon it's amazing um 
my favorite part. Uh, you know, the lyrics are great. I love the chord changes. <laughs> you know, like, I remember when I first learned those chords, like, it's just like... It's so cool. Like the, the the this is a really cool chord right here. That the last chord, and then this is like a this is a D seven sharp nine to a D seven flat nine. If that makes sense to you. And um, I remember seeing there's like that VH one making of Dark Side of the Moon or whatever it is. And uh, I remember Rick classic albums. Yeah, yeah, classic albums. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, uh, I remember uh, seeing the interview with Rick Wright talking about, you know, he, like, learned this chord. Um, I think he learned it from, like, Miles Davis. He was, like, listening to Kind of Blue. Like, because um, it was, uh, uh, you know, the song All Blues? It was like... He was learning those sharp nine chords, right? So um, he, I know that he got that that chord progression from from Miles Davis, which I thought was pretty cool. But it, just, it but even like the start of it, you know, just like the C major seven, and then this weird F chord. Yeah, Breathe, written by Dave Gilmore, Richard Wright, and Roger Waters. Okay, so next up on my Desert Island playlist, I'm going with, off of 1975, uh, the song is, uh, the album is Wish You Were Here. It's the opening and closing track, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Remember when you were young, you shone like the sun. Um... Uh, yeah, this is a tribute tribute album to Sid Barrett, and the song is one in particular about Sid Barrett. And so Sid uh, either took too much acid or was schizophrenic or a combination of both, depending on who you ask. Um, and basically he, you know, went out of his mind. He kind of... I, David Gilmour actually tells a really good story about it where, I mean, it's heartbreaking and it's not a good story, but he had gone away. He was hanging with Pink Floyd in the early days and he went away somewhere to school or something like that, came back to town and he had seen Sid just a few weeks prior and, uh, and then when he saw Sid, he had just had totally changed. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll save you the, the studio story, but... Um, this song as well, it, you know, when you had lent me the Pulse album, um, this is, I, I, yeah, I think it was the first song, it was either the first or second song on the album, and uh, I had never heard Shine On Your Crazy Diamond before that, and for, yeah, for a long time I would call it my favorite song, maybe it still is, um, but as good as it gets when it comes to Pink Floyd songwriting, everything it's really long there's two parts on the album it's you know it's broken up into like basically a 20 minute song but in two 10 minute sections and it's just incredible i mean they play the same note for the first five minutes or on the synths i mean there's so many things about this song that nobody can really pull off but i've never once played this song for somebody and i'm not listened to the entire thing and just yeah, yeah, it's universal. This is definitely on my island. I am still on Dark Side of the Moon, and I am at Us and Them. And uh, you know, Us and the, Us and Them is a big, big tune for me. Like I, like I think it's just one of their their ultimate tracks of all time. Um, and especially hearing it live, 
You know, I got to that moment when we saw them at, uh, or when we saw David Gilmour at Madison Square Garden when they when he played us and them. It's just the, it just has this powerfulness to it. You know, when it gets to the chorus, you know the 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 lyrics are great. Uh, or what's the you know price of a tea and a slice? Right? But I but I you know once again you know as the musician, just the chords are really cool. Like yeah. <laughs> drone thing going over D, right? So yeah. It's really neat. It's pretty. Yeah, no, I and it's I've uh, I started incorporating that tune in my set list when I play live too. It's a fun it's a fun one to play. Up up next on my Desert Island playlist I have uh, from 1975, Wish You Were Here, the song is Have a Cigar. All right, come in here, dear boy, have a cigar, you're going to go far, fly high, you're never going to die, you're going to make it if you try, they're going to love you. And by the way, which one's pink? Have a Cigar also has a guest singer, what's his name, Roy, Harp Roy Harper, the guitar sounds so good on this track in particular and the whole album. I wish uh, Welcome to the Machine as well. So great gig in the sky. Uh, ultimate instrumental track. Um, once again, the chords <laughs> in the song. I just love love the whole chord, the chord sequence of it. What does it do there? It's like I think it's in B minor. <laughs> <laughs> just a cool little thing that sort of travels along, uh, which I which I thought was really cool. And then and then there's a whole, you know, the 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 vocal track that I th I think the, the I can't remember what the, what the singer's name is, but she did it in like one take or something like that. And then she was like crying, saying that she was sorry for you know messing it up. And they're like, oh, that was really good. <laughs> and then and then she ended up like suing the band because you know the song the album became huge. Cause she just got paid whatever the session fee was for it, and then and then she's like, "Well, I kind of wrote the melody to, to, to the song because <laughs> I'm the only melody on it." Claire Tory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so uh, yeah, so she, so she gets big royalties on that one. I was talking about this, you know, record with a student, some students of my. Uh, there's like this kind of common theme through Dark Dark Side of the Moon where it has like this sort of minor seven to a dominant chord where it has like this there's that chord that you like you can breathe in the air different key you know and then there's even uh, what's it any any color you like Yeah, they kind of like really milk that sort of that that progression throughout the next on my desert island playlist this one's definitely coming with me it's already been mentioned it's going to make the final list obscured by clouds the opening track obscured by clouds thank you tristan uh, for showing me this album uh the same thing the opening few tracks all kind of go together so count them as one what's been brought up in another episode of this as well is that uh i met this guy that paid for, to use a sample for of this song obscured by clouds in his uh oscar nominated short film titled pear cider and cigarettes the director's name was robert valley he also directed the uh, metallica video 
for the song that features Lemmy in the music video. I can't remember it. Check out my Japanese list on Metallica where I, I discussed that as well. Um, but anyways, the guy's super talented. He's from Vancouver, British Columbia, just across the water from us. Um, but yeah, he got, he got this song and securing, the, securing this song for his show was a whole other story in itself, but really cool. Uh, I'm gonna go to, well, wish you were here. And I'm gonna start off with Shining Your Crazy Diamond. Shining Your Crazy Diamond is, um, I think that was, you know, that's, I think I, the fir I first really got into that tune. I had, um, I had, I like, I think I said before, I don't like Greatest Hits record, but I did end up buying, I remember buying a, the CD of a collection of great dance songs. Pink Floyd's collection. Of is that on there? Yeah, yeah, but it's like the radio edit version of it. So it's a little shorter. Take They take out a guitar solo. Okay. Yeah. I don't, so, think I, I don't think I've ever heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so they take out the, there's like that second guitar solo. They don't ever, whenever you hear like a live version, they never play that guitar solo, right? And I remember even like trying to figure it out, the, the song on guitar, and I, and I, and I, uh, Briefly learned the opening lick like, which is not it at all. Like it doesn't. That sounds kind of weird, right? Because I was just like, oh, I, I like Pink Floyd. Go, yeah, that's it. But then, and then someone else should be like, no, no, you got to play it like this. You got to use the open strings where it was like, and then I was like, whoa, that is the coolest sounding thing. Yeah, I can do this one in my sleep. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> Next up on my Desert Island playlist comes off of uh, 1973's Dark Side of the Moon. It's the opening track and it makes the final playlist. It's Breathe in the Air. Breathe in the Air, don't be afraid to care. Um, leave, but don't leave me. Look around, choose your own ground. I've watched Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon with uh, Wizard of Oz a lot of times. I love that, I love that together. I obviously love seeing them play it live. I also picked up that, that uh, live uh, on their original Dark Side of the Moon album that came out last year, or maybe this year or whatever, but, and that is so fucking good. Make sure you get that, really good pressing, and it just, every part of it sounds amazing. Um, I'm gonna go to Wish You Were Here. Uh, Wish You Were Here was like, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the, f the first tune that really made me fall in love with that record. Uh, also, it was the first guitar solo I think I ever learned. Um, like, note for note. Like, the, just the whole intro part. Like... <laughs> That was definitely a big tune for me. And I love the fact that this tune, you know, um, you know, it has kind of a country sort of vibe too, which is, which is, which, which I think kind of, which Pink Floyd sort of brings in once in a while. It gives it that sort of a, cause I know like, like, uh, Roger Waters, is a, he's a huge, uh, Neil Young fan. Yeah. You Neil Young, see. Neil Young, John Prine and John Lennon. It's like this tune can definitely fall in the category of, of those guys. So next up on my Desert Island playlist, uh, also comes off of uh, 1973's Dark Side of the Moon. 
And uh, the song is Time. You're tired of lying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. You are young and life is long and there is time to kill the day. Then one day you'll find 10 years have got behind you. No one told you when to run. You missed the starting gun. Yeah, that's a great line. <laughs> that line is ridiculous, number one. I've thought about that so many times at yeah. work and stuff like that. You know, you're just like, oh, God, you know, so-and-so got a new car or something like that. Like, I can barely pay the cable bill. And uh, that song, you know, you, Ten year, then one day you find 10 years ago behind you. I remember being like 18, 19 and being like, yeah, those 10 years really got behind. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so powerful that yeah. it can just kind of like you, yeah. Number one, this album is meant to be consumed whole, in a, by the whole yeah, thing yeah. at once. It's a, yeah. uh, it, I don't think there's a better concept album ever. I mean, it's clo- It's maybe another Pink Floyd album, but yeah. Um, Anyways, time is insane. The way it opens up, the clock's ticking. I always think yeah. of back, back to the Future and, and then the alarm going off. And uh, uh, just insane lyrics, uh, production quality, huge drums, everybody involved. Time has credits to every member of the band. Yeah. The lyrics at the time, Roger Waters it was smoking hash and writing the best lyrics of his life. Yeah. Why not? Go on with the hash then, Roger, for fuck's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, it was, you know, I was never really into drugs. I was smoking a lot of hash when I was writing my best fucking songs. Um, anyways, uh, you do whatever. I, Roger Waters owes me fucking absolutely nothing ever. He's an absolute hero of mine. And uh, yeah, anyways, this song, Time, is top of the fucking mountain for me. It's maybe my favorite Pink Floyd song. Have a cigar for me. Um, still wish you were here. Uh, yeah, have a cigar is just a just a gritty, dirty, funky uh, Pink Floyd tune. Um, I mean, we already talked about you know Roy Harper and uh, you know the music industry, um, but I mean just that. <laughs> Um, fun, like I, I'm actually getting the I just just sort of uh, permanently have the uh, kind of the have have a cigar guitar tone <laughs> on my guitar right now. It's like, it's that kind of unibi. <laughs> I remember when you got a you got some sort of maybe it was that pedal right there or I remember that I remember you playing that for me. Uh, just like what. What does this effect remind you of? And you just started playing something else or whatever. Like, have a cigar, man. <laughs> no doubt. This sound is so good, yeah. Um, next on my Desert Island playlist, I am going with another track from uh, Dark Side of the Moon. I'm going with Any Color You Like. Uh, songwriting credits go to David Gilmore, Nick Mason, and, and Rick Wright on this one. Um, but uh, this, this, the synths uh, for uh, Richard Wright on, I mean, all the albums, but uh, through this song, and I'm so happy that I got to see Roger Waters do it live. And I took my son to see Roger Waters with me, uh, specifically as uh, something I would have promised myself when I was a kid I would do. <laughs> after I wasn't allowed to go to Roger Waters or to Pink Floyd at the same age. Uh, but And then you had, uh, one of your friends is in was playing with Roger on uh, sax as well. What was his name, sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 Seamus Blake. And uh, everybody around us kept talking about how amazing Seamus was, so shout out to that. Bet, and, yeah, he's amazing. And at the bus stop the next day. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was like a hand on the Bible sort of thing. Yeah, but, uh, amazing. 
Yes. That, Anyways, they played any color you like. They played the second half of Dark Side of the Moon. This was yeah. on there, and I was so yeah. happy. <laughs> I'm on to animals. Start with dog. I love this one. Um, it's definitely uh, the most uh, like epic and aggressive Pink Floyd tune out there. You know, like uh, you know the whole Orwell concept on the record. Um, I just love the uh, just the darkness of it that that they get. You know. And just right off, starting out the back, you know, you get like that sort of... Yeah, it's just really weird, you know, um, really, really weird sort of... And the, and the guitar, the guitars are actually tuned down a whole step from that, so it even sounds kind of lower and deeper, right? So... Uh, yeah, I was a big fan of that acoustic guitar part off the top. Uh, all of, like the all the guitar parts that David Gilmour put on there, like all the, there's like d uh, dual leads and stuff, and and um, every little keyboard part that it's just a whole journey. That song, I love it. I think I think that's the longest track on the record too, right? Yeah, twenty minutes, and it kind of led to the first big. Apparently, it led to the first big. Uh, dispute between Roger and David, and it was about including this song on Wish You Were Here, and uh, David wanted it on Wish You Were Here, and and Roger said, no, it doesn't fit the theme of the album, and Roger was right. Next up on my Desert Island playlist, I have the song Eclipse from Dark Side of the Moon. Amazing lyrics, reminds me of John Lennon's song... Um, God. I don't believe in Beatles. I just believe in me. And uh, Roger Waters is a huge fan of the Plastic Ono Band. Uh, John Lennon's first album, which is my favorite John Lennon album. And I get it. And uh, yeah, this one's all about the lyrics. I mean, I've seen people get the lyrics tattooed on them in the shape of the pyramid and also, and I always thought that was badass. If I was going to get lyrics tattooed on me, they'd probably be big Pink Floyd lyrics. And uh, there's a lot of, lot of great lines from this one. And that's, yeah, and it closes out maybe the greatest album ever. So I'm going with the clips. All right, I'm going to go with uh, Sheep. Still in Animals there. Um, Sheep was another tune that was on the collection of great dance songs <laughs> and it was another and the, yeah, yeah and that was the first that was my first introduction to animals because i didn't i never even heard animals until i heard that i heard this uh collection of great dance songs and sheep was on there and just i remember just hearing this roads fender roads start sort of it's like very very kind of like moody almost ja like pretty jazzy sounding off the off the top for Pink Floyd, and I was like starting to get into jazz at that point. I was like, "Oh, this is this is cool. Where is this going to go from here?" And then it goes into like it's got this, you know, like you could you could it, like it sounds like one of these days when it kicks in, you know, with that same kind of <laughs> same type of shuffle beat. Um, yeah, and I was I remember getting really into drumming at that point, and and. And uh, I was uh, playing a lot of drums to this this tune, so I can I I, th I think I probably know this song better on drums than I do guitar. Next up uh, for me, uh, we're at the 16th song on our Desert Island playlist. I'm going from the album Animals. Credit to Tristan for showing me the album. Uh, the song is Pigs, three different ones. Um, that's the big man, pig man, haha, charade you are. You well-heeled big wheel, haha, -ha, charade, you are a charade. Um, and uh, yeah, this is all the animal farm stuff uh, from the album Animals and his disputes with I think, Margaret Thatcher and mm -hmm. all these different political things that they're saying. What's, what's the line about the White House in there? Uh, hey, you White House, haha, -ha, charade, you are. Yeah, so uh, the other the other day I was walking down the street with with my son Lennon, and he was like, he's like, because he's going to D.C. for a trip in a couple of weeks, he's like, and he and he goes, 
I, you guess what, Dad? And I'm like, what? He's like, I'm going to go down and I'm going to go down to see the White House. You know what song I'm going I'm to be thinking of? And he, <laughs> he's like, pigs. <laughs> Hey, you White House. <laughs> no doubt. That's kind of, that's really, that's badass, man. Tristan, yeah. Tristan's son is an incredible musician too and <laughs> knows a bunch of Pink Floyd tracks. Marty, I gave him one of the copies of Animals. He had, he's like, Dad, do you want my copy of Animals for this podcast? I was like, yeah, I need that. Well, shout out to Landon for uh, giving me that copy of, or uh, letting your dad take it back for a minute. Okay, getting into the wall. Um, I put it on another brick in the wall. Uh, it's probably one of the mo- their most pl- overplayed songs out there, but it's just it's, it's still really cool. It's like a dance hit, and plus the, the and I love the intro. I, I just love the, how they, they they use that effect. It's the same thing that they used on one of these days. And it just kind of creates this really cool sort of spacey vibe to it, right? So Yeah, and plus the lyrics were, you know, as being, you know, first hearing that song as a kid, you know, you're in school and you hear the song that says, we don't need no education, we don't need no thought control. It's like, it's amazing. If you don't eat your meat, you can't have any pudding. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Yeah, next up, I'm going off of Animals, 1977. The song is Sheep. So Sheep is going to make the Desert Island finale. Um, Sweet. Harmlessly passing your time in the grassland away. Uh, only dimly aware of certain unease in the air. Um, comfortably numb. I think that was like one of the first... Pink Floyd songs that I actually memorized the lyrics to. Subject to the radio roadkill, but I don't know. It's probably their biggest track, hands down. Like, if they're going to do a show, they're not going to... Any one of those guys is going to do a show, they're going to close with it. <laughs> yeah, except for Roger Waters opened with it on, the, on, his last, on his last tour. It's up there as far as, like, the most epic guitar solo of all time. It's transcendent. Like, it takes you to a different place in a you know, you're feeling the emotions of this this pink character, uh, no matter what. And just the the imagery through the wording, it, you know, it's so cool. You know, like, do you know what he's talking about? You know, stuff like that a lot, especially I remember being younger and saying, like, oh, man, like, listen to the lyrics on this one. I remember initially loving and, uh, yeah, the live the live version on Pulse. Um, is probably the one of the first things you would show somebody uh, if yep. you're trying to introduce them to Pink Floyd. Next on my Desert Island playlist comes off of the Division Bell. Sorry, uh, what do you want from me? Um, just a, so after post, uh, you know, when it's just the three of them: David Gilmour, Rick, and Nick Mason. Uh, you get a real David Gilmour heavy. Uh, album out of, with uh, Momentary Lapse, but then you get the Division Bell, which is kind of like their jewel, in my opinion, post Roger Waters or post The Wall. Um, so many great tracks. There's, I could, I don't really like, I, I like 90% of the songs on this album a lot, and they're all basically equal in my mind. They sound great. They're super funky, great lyrics. Anyways, what do you want from me? is a standout for me anyways. It's on my desert island. Uh, learning to Fly. We haven't talked about too many tunes on Momentary Labs of, Re- Momentary Labs of Reason yet, but yeah, that tune is, is just a good, happy, fun pop song. Like, there's nothing really too dark about that one. It's just like, you know, Pink Floyd's big sort of return with that one. Uh, next up on my playlist uh, is also from The Division Bell, and it's Keep Talking. For millions of years, mankind lived just like the animals. Then something happened, which unleashed, unleashed the power of their, of our imagination. Learn to talk. Uh, that's Stephen Hawking sampled at the start of the track. There. I have. What do you want from me? 
Yeah, I have no. I I, I love this scene. This is this is my favorite one off Division Bell for sure. I have I have a good moment of the two of us listening to Gilmore play this one. I mean, you're like, sweet. What do you do? What do you want from me? I'm like, yes. Yeah, and it's another one that just it just sounds amazing live. It's so good. My last track on my Desert Island playlist for Pink Floyd is from also from the Division Bell. There's so many great honorable mentions and stuff. Our playlists are all in the description below. You can check them out there. Um, and there's, you know, honorable mentions and stuff. I'll get Trish to throw me his honorables too, ones that came close. And, uh, but anyways, this one I'm putting on there just because I, I'm going to give credit to Dave Gilmore's wife uh, for helping Dave write this song. <laughs> And it's kind of as spit in the face to Roger Waters, but I just fucking love it. Dave, you, this is like maybe the only song that Dave Gilmore wrote the lyrics to that I really, you know, and he wrote it with help from his wife, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately. Lost for Words, the last track off the album, makes my Desert Island playlist. I've always loved this one. It, number one, it's a beautiful song. It's, you know, you open your door to your enemy, ask, can you wipe the slate clean? And he tells me to please go fuck myself. You know, you just can't win. But he's sitting there. He's, the theme of the song isn't just about that. It's about harboring, like, anger and hate and things like that. And it's sort of, as Dave asking himself, too, you know, like, what should I just be sitting around here and be caught in a fever of spite? And... Uh, yeah, that I think about that a lot where people are getting angry with politics or people are getting angry with anything that they don't believe in or whatever and they make it their cause to like, you know, fight people or fight things like that. And you're you're living you're involved in that sort of hate so much of your life. And it's like I don't understand why people choose to go down that. It's a reason I don't would never get involved in politics is because of that. It's because I just don't want to be on one side of an argument forever for the sake of being on it. And uh, anyways, yeah, this song means a lot to me for a lot of different reasons. I think the, the lyrics are incredible. And, this, and the music as well is very pretty. And you've got Dave on his acoustic guitar killing. And I love it when Dave plays acoustic guitar. Lost for words. Hey, you. Yeah. And mother are my last, are my final ones. So I'm going to pick Hey You. It was really cool. That was, that's probably the next song on my list as well. I'll, I'll <laughs> double check it later, but I think that actually was the one that was just outside. That's funny. What I like about it? Um, yeah, definitely another one of those Pink Floyd tunes that it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of mystique. Um, and... Uh, you know, I, I, I love the the same thing. I love the, I love the guitar part, that acoustic guitar part of the, at the uh, at the with the intro there, and I love the, when it goes back into the uh, don't know that don't go no. like it has that you know with another brick in the wall riff on there that was which is kind of a theme for the song, right? Yeah, you know, uh, and there and there was just an absolute another just a rocker of a guitar solo over to, over top of that heavy 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 riff, right? So, yeah, no, it's just been one of my one of my faves. Well, truth be told, Tristan and I were a little bit tired by the time we hit song twenty because it was actually only song nineteen. So we had a little text back and forth after I finally figured out what went, what went wrong, and we got to pick two more songs. My last pick was the song "One of My Turns" from The Wall. I had skipped over it. It was right beside one of these days. Honestly, one of my very favorite songs from The Wall, so I'm, I can't believe I forgot to talk about it, but day after day, love turns gray like the skin on the dying man. Tristan's final pick, his 20th song for his Desert Island playlist, is Mother, also off 1979's The Wall. Also, an additional harpoon is needed to be thrown as well. So Tristan got to throw the first another harpoon, Tristan got to throw the 11th harpoon and he used it to eliminate the song Time. So Time will not be coming to the Desert Island Deathmatch final playlist. Now we're going to go through and harpoon some more sitting ducks. There's 10 more harpoons to throw, which will leave us with 11 songs that only one of us picked for our Desert Island playlist. 
And that will complete our Desert Island Deathmatch final playlist for Pink Floyd. We'll round us out at an even 20. The 22 songs that are sitting ducks that we're going to throw some harpoons at here are as follows. Set the controls for the Heart of the Sun, Childhood's End, Us and Them, The Great Gig in the Sky, Wish You Were Here, Time, Any Color You Like, Pigs, Three Different Ones, Keep Talking, Lost for Words, Nobody's Home, Dogs, Another Brick in the Wall, Comfortably Numb, Learning to Fly, Hey You, Mother, Young Lust, One of My Turns, Fearless, Eclipse, and The Thin Ice. So the first harpoon was thrown and time was eliminated by Tristan. Let's get back into the Desert Island Deathmatch. Now it's time for the Desert Island Deathmatch, where we're going to be compromising our list, uh, forming one list. Uh, the, any song that got picked twice is going to make the finale list for the Desert Island Deathmatch finale list. Tristan and I are going to go back and forth, eliminating picks that didn't make the final list, that neither of us picked twice. Tristan, being the youngest, gets to throw the first harpoon. Uh, Tristan, go ahead, eliminate one of the songs. Any color you like. Any color you like is gone. Uh, first one I'm going to throw is childhood, childhood, childhood's end. Off of obscured by clouds. Um, lost, lost for words. I'm going to get rid of dogs. I don't know why. I've always had a fucking problem with that song. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of. Uh... I'm going to get rid of Young Lust. So I was actually really surprised that wasn't on your list. Uh, time to ruin Christmas. And I'm going to, I'm taking out, uh, yeah, I'm taking out Comfortably Numb. I've already heard it enough times for fucking 10 lifetimes. Working on construction job sites, it's played daily. And I mean, it's a great song. It's up, it's up there with Stairway and all the greatest songs ever fucking written, ever made, greatest rock songs ever. It's not coming out of my fucking desert island. I've heard it enough. I'm gonna go with uh, the thin ice. For the record, I do really like do I do really like Young Lust, but you got rid of Dog. So that's it's that's funny that uh, the final cut never, never, no songs from the final cut on your list, eh? No. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> uh, the next one I'm taking out is off of momentary lapse for reason. I'm getting rid of learning to fly. All right, I'm gonna get rid of keep talking. The last harpoon, then I think, right? One, two, three, four. Ooh, what am I gonna do here? So I'm happy to keep Great Gig in the Sky. I'm happy to keep Us and Them. Set the controls for the Heart of the Sun. I'm gonna take out Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. And that is it. We have a final list with a ton of Dark Side of the Moon. Thanks again for being on the Desert Island Deathmatch. We have the playlist below in the description. Uh, there's three there. Tristan's Desert Island playlist, my own, and uh, the final list, the compromise list when we're going to the same island. Vote in the comments below on what your favorite one is with you. There's also links to the playlist there, so you can click on those and listen to all the tracks in a row. Yeah, man. So glad you're on this one, Tris. I was waiting a long time to do. Thanks for having me, buddy. I didn't want to screw up Pink Floyd. And uh, my my dog's name's Floyd. Uh, we're massive Pink Floyd fans. Thank you so much to Pink Floyd for changing our lives, for sure. I'm sorry I'm a little low on facts and high, on, high opinions. on opinions. Uh, rest in peace to Sid Barrett. Rest in peace to Richard Rick Wright. Richard Wright. Guys, like seriously, there's only so many fucking years left. Like, just fucking, just do it. Just, just don't even hang out with each other, be in like separate like tour buses, you know, you'd be like yeah. Joe Perry and Steven Tyler, but just know that you're better together. Yeah, they can write a record. They can you do the the record remotely now, dude. I like I could care less if one of you is on a video screen or something like that. Just to hear you two perform together or to write a song together would just be unreal. But, anyways, thanks for having a reunion, doing what you could, and uh, like I said, you don't know us shit. 
Um, just thanks for having me. It was super fun. And uh, sort of deciding which tracks were my favorite. And, um, you know, but it's, a, it's a, definitely a hard decision to make because there's so many good songs out there. But uh, I think we made a pretty decent playlist where we could hang out on a desert island and, uh, you know, drink some margaritas. Fuck, man. I hope you have your guitar. Yeah, because I'll just play the I'll just play the rest on the, on, on the guitar. Thanks so much for bringing some legitimacy to this whole fucking thing, too. Let's go.